Okay, so the first question is from Rosanna and is directed at the Financial and Cybercrime Group. I was recently searching the net for information and ended up with cookies that caused serious consequences. Someone got my credit card details and charged $2,500 worth of flights and accommodation to my credit card. I have security on my PC, but it did not pick up anything. Pick up anything. How can I protect myself in the future? Well, Rosanna, firstly, thank you for the question. I'm sorry to hear that you are a victim of online fraud. Hopefully we can give you some tips that uh, will enable you to take control back and prevent it uh, happening again in the future. So the first thing you can kind of do, which is very simple, is in your web browser, if you look at the top of the page, there's usually a padlock uh, to the left of the actual web address. Um, if that padlock isn't there, it means that the connection isn't secure. So if you're thinking about putting your credit card details in, make sure that padlock's there and that encrypts the data as it goes back and forth between you and the merchant. Uh, the second tip is obviously every time you hand out your credit card details online to a store, it's essentially photocopying that information. So instead of handing out multiple times, um, maybe use a third party service such as PayPal and that will obviously just mean there's one copy in one place and there's not multiple copies out there that you need to be concerned about. Um, lastly, we'd also recommend maybe having a separate card. Um, be aware of the terms and conditions of that card in case there is an instance of online fraud and maybe limit the uh, credit limit on that card. Okay, the next question is a two-part question for Argos uh, and it's from Ray Lee and Rose. The first part is, I'm interested to find out if YouTube has content ratings or classifications which can be used to filter content. And the second part is, should I block YouTube altogether? I know it is useful for children as part of their learning and education, but what is the best way to protect them? Well, with YouTube, YouTube has obviously um, its own settings um, within the application. And within YouTube, you're able to uh, restrict what type of content your children views. It's a simple process by going into the settings menu, selecting what age, what type of material that you'd like to block, and um, to what age you'd like your child to be able to view. So in terms of, it's usually via an age setting or via a PG, G or M rating. Um, in terms of blocking YouTube, I believe that YouTube can be a useful tool for children in terms of educational purposes. So I don't think that blocking is the answer. I think that um, parents being aware of what children are using social media sites for is the most important um, step before you look at um, obviously different settings. Um, and as long as the children are aware of what they can and can't use certain, certain social media sites for, I think that's the, the best way to look at um, the use of such sites as YouTube. Okay, the next question is also for Argos. Um, Liesl has uh, shown us a device which is the Circle with Disney uh, via Netgear uh, and asked, is this the best for controlling what your kids should watch on their devices and how long they watch it for, but also what are the best cheap or free alternatives? Okay, thanks for your question, Liesl. I've personally had a look at the Disney Circle program and um, whilst I agree that it can be very functional and very beneficial for a family to use in relation to being able to restrict uh, when and um, when your child can and can't use their device. You can look at certain settings, um, timers on each devices, and you can use this program for um, up to, I think it's 10 devices. So it can be really functional and very beneficial, but once again, uh, we will always come back to the aspect that it's really important for parents to have control of the child's device and, and setting those rules and boundaries within a family home of when your children can and cannot use the devices rather than relying on an application to control what our children are doing on our devices. There's many applications such as Disney Circle out there um, and I think that if you're going to utilise one in conjunction with your own rules and boundaries at home, do your research and look at what works best for you. Okay, this one might be from both areas. Uh, this is, um, can you put timers on devices so that after a certain amount of time they cease to work? Perhaps an alarm that deafens them when they touch anything after 10 p.m., which I quite like. Well, I'm not sure about the alarm, but you can definitely put timers on devices. Um, so your router in your house at the moment, if you've got Wi-Fi, uh, probably has that functionality already built into it. So it's simply a case of obviously going into it and seeing if it's there. There's also a number of options available where you can limit devices um, owned by particular people, you can limit when it shuts off, you can limit when it starts back up and how much time they can spend in total. Yeah, I might add, uh, add my two cents to that. I think the best timer in the house is you. Take the device away from your children before they go to bed. Uh, relying on technology to limit your children's access to, uh, to the internet, social media, communicating with their friends, 
has proven to be fairly uh, random. You are the person that's provided your child with the technology. You're the person that's provided your child with access to the internet. Take responsibility for that and set some very strict rules around how they use it. Uh, my recommendation would be, before they go to bed, take the device away from them and turn the router off. Uh, again, across the board, uh, what platforms or sites are actually safe and how do we manage the minefield of privacy restrictions on all the different sites? It's a case of common sense. Um, you're never entirely safe when you're online. There's always going to be an element of risk. Um, but there are obviously sites which have a good reputation which are safe. Um, and it's just simply a case of, of applying common sense. Don't go to anything which seems too good to be true. And once again, from a, a parental point of view, um, be aware of what platforms um, and social networking sites your children are using. Sit down with them, um, look at the sites with them, educate them, look at the privacy settings, look at the restrictions, um, look at location settings um, within certain applications, um, and educate yourself and your children on what applications and sites are safe for the children to be in. Yeah. Our experience is that wherever children, uh, whatever type of uh, online technology children are using, whatever app it is or whatever social media page it is, uh, child sex offenders will gravitate towards areas where children are. So uh, my advice would be do not take any area of the internet as being safe uh, at, at face value. Uh, listen to what Kath just said. Explore the areas that your children are using and make sure that you familiarise yourself with the security settings on those pages and talk, talk through setting up the account with your child. Okay, for the Financial and Cybercrime Group, I think I received a scam email and I clicked on the link. What should I do now? Um, probably if you think um, your information or your computer may have been compromised by the way that it's operating or you're concerned, um, definitely take your computer along to have a specialist look at it and sort of do a search to see if there's been any malware installed or anything along those lines. Um, if you do find that some of your identity information has also been compromised, then it would be worthwhile contacting an organisation like ID Care to actually report it to them and also report it to us that you believe that your identity has been compromised. And how do I know if the person I'm speaking to is legitimate or a scammer? Well, you, at any given time, you can't know. So um, you need to be really careful, obviously, when you're online of who you're sharing your information with, who you're sharing photographs with. You can't be sure, um, especially if it's not a known contact, of whether the person is purporting to be who they are. Um, photographs can be used and downloaded from the internet and used on identity profiles and things like that. So, you know, there's some ways, in terms of... Um, things like social media, um, if you do sort of a Google image search and things along those lines through Google, you may find those images pop up in other areas of the internet as well and that may give you some corroboration on the identity of that person. Okay, so the next one's for Argos. Um, I've heard varied information regarding children's mixed game sites, Roblox. Do you have any input on this? I haven't had any uh, intelligence come into us with respect to that specific uh, area of the internet, but we, we know from, uh, for, for a very long time uh, from our investigations going way back that uh, anywhere, as I said before, that children uh, gravitate towards using the internet, child sex offenders will also gravitate. So uh, it would not surprise me at all that if, if that particular area of the internet that your child is using, there are child sex offenders potentially grooming or accessing your child. If there's a facility for communication uh, within the game, uh, that elevates the level of danger associated with it. So if they can message uh, each other or share information directly with each other, then you should e be even more concerned. So. I think the holistic message that we're going to deliver to you today about online safety for children is that do not take anything at face value. Make sure you familiarise yourself with the particular application, game, social media page. Understand how it works. Also, particularly maybe with this, this particular game site, just see at the, uh, at the web interface to see if there's a reporting mechanism to, uh, to see if there's, uh, you can communicate with the people who've authored it so that you can register a complaint or get any information about it. Yes, um, there's certain 
Within each game, um, look at what your child's playing and also look at the chat functionality within these games. Most games will have a way where you can engage with other users or players, but there are games that have an open chat facility or, or functionality where you can type your response back um, and that makes it easier for child sex offenders to engage with children and target them specifically. But there are games that have initiated a more safe way of messaging and there's self-populated, um, uh, I guess, phrases um, that limit how um, you can engage with other players. Um, so those type of games, I guess, are a more safer option for children because you can't um, self-populate what you'd like to say and it makes it easier, uh, sorry, it makes it harder for a child sex offender to try and get a child across to another platform. Um, how do I stop photos of my devices from being accessed by unauthorised parties? So most modern phones now, in fact all of them, uh, will have some kind of security mechanisms built in to obviously restrict <coughs> access to that phone. Um, so what I would suggest you do is put a PIN code on your phone and don't tell anyone about that PIN code. Almost treat it like a PIN code for your ATM card or use another security measure such as Face ID or a fingerprint. That's going to limit greatly uh, the chance of someone picking up your phone in case you, in, in the case that you lose it and being able to access those images. And look, we'd probably also add to that that um, if you are using photos sort of stored within your device on your social media profiles and sort of sharing things online, everything that you share online has the potential to be wider, widely shared. So if you think about you know, you sharing a photo on Facebook with your friends and then other people like it, other people can see it, that photo then becomes available to a much wider audience. So you need to be really careful about what you're actually going to share online. The last one um, is for Argos and that is, what do I do, what do I do if my child has been contacted online by someone I am suspicious of? If your child believes that they've been contacted by somebody online that is suspicious or I guess has engaged a child in an inappropriate fashion, um, our advice would always be cease contact immediately. Um, I guess uh, uh, keep any communications that have been had with this person. Um, if you're concerned that it may in fact be grooming behaviour or has amounted to a criminal offence and obviously report this matter to the police, uh, a safety message, ensure your child's okay and they haven't been, um, I guess, offended against in any shape or form. Um, I guess keeping our children safer is our number one priority. Um, but it comes back to knowing who your children are, are talking to on the internet. Um, sit down with your child, look at friends lists, look at how many people they're engaging with. Do they know these people? And if they don't, why are they speaking with these people? How do they know them? Um, the, I guess the most important message is if your child doesn't know this person uh, you know, face to face, then should they be speaking to them online? Are they a friend? But um, always cease communication immediately um, and hopefully your child will come to you if this has happened and uh, report the, the matter to police. And just as we wrap up, is there any final safety messages from both groups? Um, definitely from a financial crime perspective. Um, you are the only person that sort of can make decisions about who you give your money to and how you sort of interact online. So be really vigilant in terms of when you're receiving emails that don't seem to be, you know, quite right or coming from a correct email address. You know, your financial institutions won't necessarily contact you via email and ask for your personal information. Um, you know, when pe companies um, purporting to be Telstra ring in, don't give them access to your devices. Um, and just be really careful, your money is hard earned. Um, if people cold call you in your home, be really careful about you know, your interactions with them. Um, we have a huge amount of information on the mypolicewebsite.gov.au. Um, if you come to the Are You In Control page, there's a lot of resources and tools on current scams and places to go for help if you need it. I guess the key thing is Taking back that control starts with asking these types of questions because if you're aware of your security, it's a lot less likely that it's going to be breached. No? Um, the safety message for us is once again, our parents need, uh, sorry, as parents, we need to be the front line with our children. We need to educate our children on how to use their devices. Um, as John said before, we give our children these devices, they need to 
know how to use them um, correctly and appropriately and they also need to be educated on how to protect themselves online and how to be safe. Uh, sit down with your children, learn how to use the device with your children. Um, there's a lot of parents that don't even know the pin codes to get into their child's device. That is something that you should be setting up, that you should be in control with. Um, if your children are on social, social media, know what they're on. Have access to their profiles so you can help protect them. And I think just having that open line of communication with your child, um, having that trust and respect within the family home on how um, the child uses the device and, when, and um, when they can use their device, I think if we as parents can just establish that relationship with our children, then um, I think our children will have um, a better chance of being safe online. Yeah, exactly what Kath said is, is correct. Uh, be aware too, increasingly we're seeing instances where children will set up multiple accounts on their devices. So for example, with Instagram, they'll have fake Instagram accounts. So you'll have access to uh, one of their accounts, but the importance of sitting down with your child and accessing their device uh, comes to the fore there because if you can log into their Instagram account with them, you'll see if they have other accounts and, and the images that they're sharing on those other accounts. And this comes down to trust, but it also comes down to being a parent. You're not their friend, you're their parent. You're charged with the responsibility of making sure they're safe. You've provided them with this technology, make sure that you uh, place yourself as a firewall between them and potential sexual predation. Uh, the Queensland Police Service has got the capability to investigate these crimes uh, and we can do that within Queensland, nationally or internationally. So reporting is definitely an option and we will follow those things up. But we'd ask you to, to be the front line and to make sure that you are taking responsibility as, as the first person uh, for the safety of your children. Right, thanks very much everyone for your participation today. Certainly the relevant information discussed and linked to the services mentioned we've put up on our web page for you. Folks, the internet is part of our everyday life. Hopefully by following some of these simple steps mentioned, we can stay safe in the online environment. Thanks very much to everyone.